Hey guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Bedford, welcome to the Phil Paleologi Show. With updates and breaking news from the WBSM Newsroom and on the WBSM app. And your calls and conversation at 508 996 0500. Here he is, New Bedford's number one talk show host, WBSM's morning mayor, Phil Paleologus. A lot to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, you're listening, right? Thank you. It means a lot to us. The boot is coming back. Straight ahead. Don't go away. Tax refund advance loans at Jack. Another refill of hot chocolate. And good morning. Yeah, good morning. Um, do you agree with uh, what some are saying is that this whole bit behind uh, January 6th was to prevent Trump from ever having to run for a public office. That was their ultimate goal. Would you agree with that? Well, yeah. yeah. It's to punish him, to have him be prosecuted and banned from holding any office ever again. I think that is in the report. That's what they say in the report. Uh, and they also say something that's, you know, as clear as the nose on our faces, which is this whole thing, this whole January 6th thing and all, all is all about one guy. It's all about Trump. He didn't want to give up power. Even though he lost the election, he just couldn't accept. He, he couldn't he couldn't accept the loss, wouldn't accept it, refused to accept it and. We now know that in two months from the time of the election in November until January 6th, it is a stunning number. He tried 200 different attempts to stay in office, 200 through different plans, plots, pressures on various state officials, you know, 200 different things. Uh, That's how desperate he was not to acknowledge that he lost an election. And by the way, I lost an election. Never dawned on me when I lost to say that I didn't lose. I mean, <laughs> you lose, you lose. Mm. Welcome to life. Right. You know. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. But, but I think the committee did a fantastic job. There's so much stuff that's come out overnight. Like, first of all, the Cassidy Hutchinson oh, yeah. incident. Well, Explain and, Cassidy. And this, yeah. Okay, so Cassidy Hutchinson was the assistant to Mark Meadows, the yes. White House chief of staff. Right. 26-year-old woman, had been up on the hill a little bit. <clears throat> this girl is a, obviously just a, one of these people who's a natural for working for Congress people. They like her. They trust her. Mm-hmm. She's good at it. She's right. smart in her way about doing things to get things done. So suddenly at this young age, she gets this fantastic job as the assistant to Mark Meadows. And she's poised. She's sitting at a desk right outside his office. So she knows, you know, virtually everything that's going on. And right down the hallway from the Oval Office. So she's in and out with Trump all day and everything. And, okay, January 6th happens. The committee gets going. And last spring... The committee deposed her twice, which means interviewing her in an office somewhere under oath Mm -hmm. with a lawyer. Well, when they summoned her to be uh, deposed, uh, she didn't have any, she has no money. She couldn't hire a lawyer. And so the White House, the Trump people, they were out of office by now, so the Trump people, said, don't worry about it. We're getting you a lawyer. Oh, she said, I won't be able to pay for it. Don't worry about it. It's all taken care of. So she thought that was good. But she began, she says this under oath in this report. She started getting a funny feeling right away 
what's this all about? They're giving me a lawyer and they're paying for it. What does that mean about what I'm supposed to say? Yeah. And this lawyer, Stefano has a teeny who had been in the White House under Trump. He's now representing her. And ba- basically, and this is, these are my words. He gooses her over into lying under oath. Oh. He tells her, I, I don't want you to perjure yourself, but if you don't remember something, it's okay just to say you don't remember it. And if you're not totally certain, you can just say, I don't recall. And every lawyer will tell you that's not right. You, if she doesn't recall, that's fine to say it. But you can't just keep saying, I don't recall. If you do recall, you can't do it. And he advised her to just say, I don't recall. And she does it for the first two depositions, Bill, and feels awful about it, knows that this isn't right, that her conscience was killing her because she knew she knew a lot more. And as she put it, I felt like I had Trump looking over my shoulder the whole time. So she goes and looks up Watergate. Now, Watergate happened, I believe, 22 years before this young woman was born. So she, you know, what does she know? Right. She looks up and reads about John Dean and especially Alexander Butterfield, the famous White House aide in the Nixon White House who testified that there was a taping system in the Oval Office. And she read about what he went through when he told the truth about this thing. Long story short, she dumps the... Stefano DePazzettini, the lawyer that Trump gave her, gets another lawyer and reverses her testimony and tells the truth and became the star witness of uh, the January 6th committee. And, of course, told all about what they knew going into January 6th. They knew it was bad. Talked about Trump throwing food against the wall and uh, threatening the Secret Service, and all the stuff that we've come to know now, it came from her. And because her conscience bothered her that she wasn't telling the truth. And that, like a mob boss, Trump is pressuring all these people. It's right out of The Godfather, getting lawyers for people and paying for the lawyer as long as you testify the way I want. As they put it, you've got to remain loyal. It's right out of The Godfather. <laughs> So, well, this uh, this testimony, I know uh, it did turn on that he knows he lost, whereas what he told her before uh, that yeah. he didn't lose, and now she's saying he knows he lost. So, yeah. uh, interesting development. Yeah, we have that from a lot of people that knew him. That Trump. Well, by the way, how could you not know you lost? I mean. I mean, on, when they add up the votes and you've lost, you lost. And this is tr- what Trump does all the time. He, in the spring of 2020, eight months before the election, publicly he started talking about, well, if I lose, it's because the election is rigged. Mm. Now, what the hell's that all about? I mean, come on. Yeah. That would be like the Patriots before a game, Belichick would come out and say, we're going to win the game tomorrow. There's no way we don't win. And if we don't win tomorrow, it's only because the referees rigged it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what kind of person would say such a thing? Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, indeedy. Uh, well. And we also found out, you know, Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, Republican, who added up the votes, that's what the Secretary of State does, and certifies the election and a certified Georgia for Joe Biden and Trump, we now know, because they tape recorded the famous phone call <clears throat> where Trump calls him up, puts the arm on him, and says, I want you to come up with 11,780 votes so that I win the state. Well, what we didn't know until this report came out is 18 times before that taped call, Trump called Raffensperger. 18 times, Phil trying to get him on the phone. This is the president of the United States who works for you and me. We pay his salary. 
He's supposed to be running the country and foreign policy and all that. <clears throat> 18 times he picks up the phone and dials the Secretary of State of the state of Georgia. Now, presidents don't talk to people in state government. They talk maybe to the governor, maybe. But, you know, presidents don't talk to low-level officials in state government. Well, that, you know, and he's, he's just pressuring this guy to change the votes. That's incredible. 18 times. Just in, crazy. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Remember I just said Trump, we pay Trump's salary? Mm-hmm. And you know how his taxes were released this week? Yeah. Oh, well, we found out another of the many lies of Donald Trump. He had told people he would not accept the salary as president. Right. I don't need to. I'm rich. I'll just take one dollar as the law requires, and I'll donate the rest back to the Treasury. Mm-hmm. Not true. We now know from his taxes from 2017, 18, 19, and 20 when he was president, he took the salary every year, did not donate it back. Hmm. So, another why. Wow. I'm, uh, hmm. I'm just soaking I'm this so in. I'm so shocked. Yeah. You know. Who do you like? Uh, I know it's too early. But is there anyone out there that you say, hey, this guy is, uh, he's attractive. He can win. <laughs> So, oh, I, I said it to you last week. Sununa would be fine if he were uh, the Republican nominee for president. You're the governor of New Hampshire. He'd be fun. He'd be great. Yeah. But you know, right now the Republican Party, I, I don't know where they're headed. Uh, Trump's running. It's a funny thing. He announced a month ago has not left Mar-a-Lago, other than playing golf at a golf course. He hasn't gone anywhere hasn't um, campaigned anywhere, hasn't done one public event since the day he announced for president. So that's a little strange. Uh, But he's still very popular among Republican voters, there's no doubt. But there's a long way to go, too. So I I, I don't know. Uh, You know, whether DeSantis is... DeSantis has to prove himself. Just by being the governor of Florida doesn't automatically mean you're ready to be president or ever could be president. Who knows? No, but... Uh, that's why we have prime primaries. Let them go I, out and yeah, fight it out that's and right. show their stuff. That's one thing. But the other thing is uh, I like to have people who've served as governor because... Uh, you oh, know, yeah, definitely. They, they know what a budget is. They put their hands in there and, uh, you know, their hands on more than a lot of Definitely. these. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You and know, I think after Trump, I think after a term of Trump where, you know, his argument in 2016 was a popular argument. Uh, you need an outsider, someone who's not part of the mess of Washington to come in and clean it up and run the country. And that was a winning argument, not just for him, but a little bit for Bernie Sanders, too. Even though Bernie was a senator, he was an outsider yeah, and was very popular as an outsider. And they were running, both of them, Trump and Bernie, against the consummate insider in Hillary Clinton. Mm-hmm. And Bernie almost beat Hillary in the primaries, and Trump did beat her in the general. But Trump turned out to show us something, which, which Jimmy Carter showed us, who was the last sort of outsider, also a governor, and she liked the governor thing. He'd been a one-term governor of Georgia. He was a failure as president, uh, Carter, and so was Trump, really, because they didn't know how to run the federal government. It's a massive job. You can't just rail against it and think it'll fall in line. You got to get, as you say, your hands dirty. You got to put your hands in there. Now, that's the beauty of Reagan. Reagan was an outsider, but he somehow took over the entire government. Uh, It was an amazing spectacle and bent the government to his will. Yeah. I agree with you. What Reagan did. Yeah. And maybe because he'd been two terms the governor of the biggest. Uh, state, obviously, California, which is 
like the 12th biggest country in the world or something. Uh, maybe that was it. Also, he hired good people. Yeah. Good people like Jim Baker working for him. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, but Reagan was a success as an outsider. Carter and Trump were not. They just, they never really got their presidencies working right. Yeah. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. We have, uh, uh, Maura Healy, the uh, governor-elect up here in Massachusetts, who's uh, getting ready for her inauguration. And uh, yesterday, by the way, the uh, governor called uh, the show yeah. yesterday oh. to, just to say thank you and, you know, to say that... He's uh, off to the NCAA. That'll be a tougher job than being governor, I think. And I'm not kidding. I think <laughs> college sports is a mess. Uh, and oh. why this guy wants to be the head of it is beyond me. <laughs> A mess is right. The, the, yeah. Oh, they are in debt. They're, oh, my God. They're, we have the MBTA pension fund that uh, is uh, equal to the mess that the uh, NCAA is in. But, hey, listen, he said he's going to take a few months off and then in March start up, and uh, he's looking forward to it. But uh, I just never... How much are they paying them? They must oh, be they... paying them a lot to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll, I bet you it's uh, two, three million bucks. I bet. Yeah. 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 And he's got to get a guarantee of a lot of years at that salary so that if he makes controversial decisions, mm -hmm. they can't just throw him out right away, you know. It's, I, I, it's an incredible uh, uh, thing. I mean, it doesn't just affect... We all think of NCAA sports, football, and basketball. But they it governs girls and boys, all the sports. You know, yeah. and if you're a if you're a girl going to college to play lacrosse, it's just as important for you as the kid that's going to play football in hopes of uh, using that as a minor league training ground for the NFL. And it's all part of the same thing. How do you make it equal and fair? And the coaches are making millions, and the players make nothing. How is that fair? It's not. No. I, I, he's and Charlie Baker from afar. A plus governor. A plus. So I expect he'll be an A plus president of the NCAA. I have no doubt he'll do his part. I just don't know you can fix the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. That's, you know. Uh, well, we'll find out soon. And uh, I'm with you 100% uh, about Baker. 100%. Yeah, he's a first class. I, the thing is, Phil, you go to school to learn. You know what I mean? And, and mm -hmm. the professors and the teachers and the teaching assistants have such a huge impact on a kid's life. And, you know... You're there to learn. I, football and the amount of money these coaches make and generate for the school, the whole thing is out of whack. It is. And they're, they're members of the faculty, these coaches. That's the other thing. They don't really do any educating other than football educating, but they make, they, they're money making machines for the college. Yep. Yep. So, ah, oh God. Whew. I know it. Well, it's uh, it's like this introduction to uh, Western philosophy, you know. Uh, gone are the days, John, of fundamental, you know, goodness and truth and beauty and, you know, what to find uh, worthwhile in life. Nowadays, it's like uh, unbelievable, you know. It's a whole different yeah. setup. It really is. It's okay. You know, the year's coming to an end, but I think we got to look at our in our mirror for a minute. Mm -hmm. And no matter what problems this country has, we are so, we should be so thankful that we're in this country now. Because it's like nowhere on the planet is as good as this ever, 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 ever. Problems Amen. admitted. Yeah. It's still fantastic. You bet. You betcha, buddy. Where, where did President Zelensky 
for the first time in 300 days when he left his country. Where does he come? Washington to the United States of America on an American Air Force jet to come here to thank us and, in effect, say, we're your partner on the side of good against the evil. Now, what's the evil? Putin is evil. The Iranian government, which is giving Putin drones and other armaments. Oh, and the other one that's giving Russia armaments, North Korea. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. It's the United States, NATO, Western Europe, and Ukraine standing up to Putin, the Ayatollahs, and Kim Jong-un. Mm. That's, if, uh, that's the lineup. We have to win this war. And we have to defeat these bastards. They're evil. They're killing children, raping women, blowing up uh, power plants and heating things and all. I mean, it's just, it's Hitler all over again. Absolutely. It's just terrible. John, I've got to run, but uh, I love, right, Phil. I love the message. Are we, on, are we on next week? Indeed we are. I'll talk to you Wednesday. With pleasure. Thank you, John. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry right. Christmas. All the best. Okay. Bye-bye. John LeBoudlier, former congressman. Take the morning mayor wherever you go. Download the WBSM app. Into the newsroom at 831. Phil, a pleasure being with you today. Likewise, Phil. Thank, Thank you very much. Well, the brutally cold winter storm that's chilling much of the nation is now blamed for at least three deaths. The National Weather Service in Buffalo, New York, calling the holiday storm a once-in-a-generation event. NBC meteorologist Dylan Dreyer has more. Not only will we deal with the falling snow on the order of about two to three feet, we're also going to deal with those wind gusts up to 60, 70 miles per hour. So it is going to be absolutely impossible to travel. A blast of Arctic air dug into a big stretch of the U.S. on Thursday, setting off dramatic drops in temperatures. Colorado, Montana, and Wyoming saw breathtaking temperature plunges, and more than a dozen other states had readings below zero. Over half the states are forecast to see wind chill temperatures in double digits below zero in coming days. The Weather Service is warning of dangerously cold conditions across most of the country this week. Now, travel plans for some might be canceled or delayed due to the weather. But AAA says about 113 million people will travel this holiday season. Trey Thomas reports. That number covers folks who are going 50 or more miles away from home between Friday and January 2nd. A top official said workers on hybrid schedules are able to work remotely and extend their time away from home. The vast majority of those who are traveling will do so by car. I'm Trey Thomas. Global supply chains are back to normal. The Wall Street Journal says goods are moving around the world again and reaching consumers, and the backlogs of cargo ships have cleared up at major ports. The report says ocean shipping rates have plunged below pre-pandemic levels, and U.S. retailers now have ample inventory. Financial experts tell the journal it bodes well for U.S. consumers heading into the new year, though profits for transport companies will be pinched now that supply and demand are back in balance. Companies that make medicines for children say they're running around the clock to meet rising demand. The pediatric medication makers told the White House on Thursday they're operating 24-7 as parents across the country continue to face medicine shortages brought on by the spread of COVID-19, the flu, and RSV. The recent surge in respiratory viral spread has led pharmacy chains like Walgreens and CVS to limit the amount of child pain medication customers can buy at one time. Senior leaders of major medicine manufacturers and distributors met with Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra and FDA Commissioner Dr. Robert Califf. Congress has approved a bill to expand the federal government's power to prosecute international war crime suspects who are in the U.S. The bill allows them to be tried in a federal court regardless of the nationality of the suspect of the vic- or the victim or where the crime was committed. Experts say the bipartisan bill now goes to President Biden. It would bring the U.S. legal code into line with international law and prevent the country from being seen as a potential haven for war criminals. The annual reenactment of George Washington 
Washington's famous Christmas crossing on the Delaware River will take place this weekend. Event organizer Jennifer Martin expects up to 10,000 people on the banks of the Delaware on Christmas Day in the afternoon. For a lot of people, there's nowhere they'd bet rather be than here on Christmas Day. This is the turning point of the American Revolution. The men are tired, they're exhausted, and Washington leading them to victory inspires them to stay on. They'll hear a speech and musket and cannon firing before reenactors in their Revolutionary War uniforms row Durham boats from Pennsylvania to New Jersey by Trenton. Officials say some of the hundreds of reenactors are flying in from other parts of the country to take part in recognizing the historical moment. Historians say the crossing marked a turning point in the Revolutionary War. In sports, the Boston Bruins play the New Jersey Devils on the road tonight at 7, fresh off last night's win. The Celtics are home versus the Minnesota Timberwolves this evening. Game at 7. And, 30, and the New England Patriots play the Cincinnati Bengals tomorrow at 1. Now we check your local forecast with ABC6 meteorologist Nick Morganelli. Gusty winds continuing this morning with temperatures in the 50s, but this afternoon the rain ends. We'll continue with the strong wind and temperatures drop through the 40s and 30s. We're in the 20s this evening. The wind chill is heading for zero with scattered snow showers. For Saturday, ineffective sunshine, sub-zero morning wind chill, and afternoon highs in the 20s. As the temperature dips on the south coast, we'll want to watch for icy roads. Right now it's 54 degrees in New Bedford. The time is 8.36 a.m. I'm Phil Devitt for WBSM News. Stay up to date with New Bedford's news talk station, 1420 WBSM. And get breaking news alerts and podcasts with the WBSM app. Thank you, Phil. We have three Phils here. Whoa. Absolutely. All right. Huh? Phil gets his fill of fill this morning on WBSM. Too many fills. Too many fills. There's no not such enough. Thing. Not enough. What do you mean too many? <laughs> so you have a gift. Oh. I brought you both something. Some protein, oh. some dairy. A wow. cheese roll. We were talking about cheese rolls. Look at that. Yeah, from, from Friendly Donuts over New Bedford and sit, uh, sit See, these are round. There. These are round, right? The ones we had at the diner were more oblong. And when you cut it in the uh, center and then grilled it, you could see the the pocket of cheese. Yes, there. absolutely. Mm. Wow. When I got out of high school, um, I tried fishing again. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. And uh, a m- mutual friend of me, Phil and Celeste, is Jim Martin. He had a salvage yard up the street from the diner, and it was getting close to fall. And I wasn't sure I wanted to work in the yard. And uh, and uh, one day, Jim and I were there having breakfast, and Phil was saying I might need somebody in the kitchen. So I stepped in and. I used to beat him in the morning with Phil and uh, <laughs> sausages, bacon, wow. and home Kids fries and get the coffee going. <laughs> That's great. I'll get his mm-hmm. resume out. And still <laughs> friends all these years later. Yeah. yeah. Over 40 years, yeah. I met him through my mother and through a, a beautiful lady named Leon Ilda. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I was the last couple of days I was listening. Like, yesterday was your birthday and, and your daughters and other people. And uh, when I called in last week, um, like, hearing about the tragedy yesterday, young of the gentleman over in the Kushnet. The holidays is wonderful and joyful, but let's not forget about the people no, who are definitely. suffering and lost, especially if it's yeah. been recent. So this oh, holidays isn't joyful for them, but no. the way I express my gratitude is by season. showing up. It's and, very, very tough. You know, uh, yeah. we do think of Christmas, Hanukkah as joy and happiness. It's also very, very poignant and personal, and people grieve during these uh, holidays, especially this one. You know. Oh, yeah. No question about it. Yeah. It could be a tough time of year for people. Absolutely. It, you know. Absolutely. All righty. But I uh, I had a little, little time. I'm going to go home and cook a, cook a ham and donate it to one of my uh, sports clubs tonight. They're doing a little gathering. I already had the big Christmas party, but this is more about for the board of directors and the regulars. And, uh, oh, and then I'm relaxed, and I'm going to be bouncing all over the place for the holiday season and, and stay still tomorrow if the weather is too miserable, especially if everything freezes up and... Uh, there if, you go. If you can't make it somewhere, call. Okay. Texting is nice, but call. That's so personal. <laughs> I got to run. Merry okay, Christmas. Thank you, guys. Love it. Thanks for le- allowing me in, Phil. <laughs> you bet. It's uh, 839, and caller, you are on the radio. <laughs> well, Phil, thank you very much. I have a special happy birthday to, to send out uh-huh. to a good young man. That is a very good bowler. He comes from a family that bowls very well. In fact, his father, Bill, works at the uh, post office in the Kushnet, Clem Amaral. 
Oh, sure. His son, Nathaniel, his birthday is tomorrow. And Quim, he made a perfect game twice in the same house Mm -hmm. at Wonderbowl. Wow. A perfect game of 300, Phil. Wow. That I actually witnessed. Mm. And I want to tell you, this guy could bowl like no one's business. Anyone who does 300, I respect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. boy, that man, I respect him dearly. And he had a, fr- uh, a man that I call a friend now for the rest of my life. And his son, Dale Carroll and Noah. His son. Yes. Those two are near and dear to my heart. And those two can bowl like no one's business. Love That's it. one to bowl. Mm-hmm. Big Al, I am so happy you called in and uh, told us about them. I'm joining you in our applause. So thank you for that. And caller, let me uh, squeeze you in right now. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor. How are you? I'm well. Listen, I want to thank you for giving us the best New England Christmas present by putting John Boubier on for like 40 minutes today with you. <laughs> and um, for all the listeners, we appreciate that. <laughs> but you, th- you think in 2023, he'll even talk bad about Joe Biden as much as he talks about Donald J. Trump? You know, in a court of law, there's usually a, a, a defense, right? And there's also the prosecutor. Now, in the court for Donald J. Trump, there's only been a prosecutor. There's never been a defense lawyer. It's, it's amazing the court of law that's been trial Donald J. Trump to all these sins, but... It's only been one-sided. You know what? (laughs) If you um, lived in Florida, you would feel much differently because Florida is so, so uh, Trump-friendly. You have no idea how the attitude and the atmosphere is opposite to here in the uh, Bay State. So uh, there's a lot to that uh, Rubik's Cube, but... Thank you for the call. By the way, happy Merry Christmas to all your family. I heard you have an open house at your house. Is there anybody? Come on by. I don't know. We're going to have to. I mean, I know you live in Dobbins somewhere, but I have no <laughs> idea. It was fun. Is that like a North well, if you find out, Dobbins? then you can come over, all right? <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to have to try to find out. Okay. So. And it's not Dartmouth. Oh. oh, the Bill Paleologus. Show. Butcher shop yet? Get your order in. Uh, from what I understand, they're going to be open Christmas Eve. All right, and but not all day. So um, Christmas Eve, they are uh, closing early. But get your uh, order in. Go on by, pick up your last minute uh, needs and side dishes, all you want, and of course. Fabulous prices on uh, beer and wine. I don't know how he does it. Uh, 996-0500 is our number. 846, our time. Take the morning mayor wherever you go. Download the WBSM app. It's going to be uh, good for the fishing industry, hopefully. Senators uh, Markey and Moulton have unveiled a plan that creates a federal fund. This would be used to compensate the fishing industry for any losses related to the development of offshore wind farms. Now, New Bedford Light had a great story about that. And the uh, legislation would require all at-sea wind farm developers to set aside compensation funds and uh, provide those uh, federal oversights with those funds in case something happens. 847, do we have somebody over here on the line? Let's find out. Hello. Good morning, Phil. Good morning. Good morning, Phil. Hi. 
I, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, you and your family. Very nice of you. Everyone there at the station and all your listening audience. Thank you so much. You as well. You and your family. You, you think you I appreciate it. Much appreciated. You know who you are. Your pal, uh, Labatt. <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell you, uh, I think you're his therapist. Ah. He comes on. <laughs> I really do. I enjoy it very much. You know, a lot of people get irritated, but uh, I look at you as the therapist and him as the uh, patient. He's having a lot of Trump withdrawals. Uh-huh. He's got to get it out of the system, you know? That's funny. <laughs> I think he gets, he gets up in the morning with cold sweats, you know, with Donald Trump. I mean, him in his limousine having a food fight. I don't know. Oh, that's too, too funny. Yeah, well, uh, I'm just going to say, I mean, he never once speaks about Biden and what he's done <laughs> and what he's doing. I know. To our nation, to our economy. I know. And the inflation and uh, weakening uh, weakening economy, uh, an enormous debt that continues to uh, rise. Isn't it and, uh, terrible? It's runaway terrible. inflation. I mean, all of this is uh, I know. hurting everybody, especially the working poor. I know. I know. You know, if we could just get back and stabilize things, you know, I'd be happy with stabilizing things, much well, less going, you know, yeah, you know. And I was watching C-SPAN, too, yesterday, and, uh, you know, this whole thing with uh, the omnibus bill at $1.7 trillion. Mm-hmm. Now, there was a, uh, a point of order act of 1974, so everyone can have time to read these 4,000 pages. Can you imagine? They don't. Of earmarks. They don't. They go through every item line by line. The lawmakers get, don't. The, the aides do. And then they, uh, you know, right. briefly give but, them uh, the crunched, uh, you know, version. Either way, they didn't have time, according to Rand Paul. I mean, they gave this, uh, this spending bill with all these earmarks uh, two to three days yeah. before you're going to vote for it. Yeah. I know. You know, and it's, uh, it's Nancy Pelosi's philosophy, you got to vote for it before you know what's in it. <laughs> At this point, I don't know if there's a, I don't know what to think other than this is still the greatest country, but wow, we can surely do a lot better. Yeah, well, the question is for how long? Well, that's, nobody knows that. Nobody knows that. Well, not if they continue doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, These elected officials who've gone rogue, Mm -hmm. they're supposed to represent their public servants, and, and, and just, they're just, doing whatever they want. They're just running roughshod over the American people. And Let, let me ask I you mean, a quick question. What What is the role of government? Yeah, the role of government is to serve the nation and to serve the people, uh, infrastructure, national defense, and those things that you know, the private sector uh, can't do or shouldn't do. But, I mean, it's the, the government, as we know it today, is not what the founders intended. And that's why we have such a national debt. $3 million for the LGBTQ plus museum in New York City that's in this omnibus bill. They, they, they fill all the bills with their pork, uh, you know, programs and whatnot. Uh, uh, Michelle that's Obama, not new. That's uh, not new. Path or a bridge. Uh, if I heard not, correctly on the It's not news. just them. The Republicans have these... Uh, crazy wishes uh, in there too so that is part of the reality of the process all right what what really does uh, affect me is what direction what direction this uh, country is going in and i don't like to see the direction that it's going in today Anyway, Merry Christmas to you, my friend. Merry Christmas to you, Phil. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Don't go away. WBSM app is everything. style we go to the phone lines and good morning thanks for phoning in good morning 
Good. Johnny, one note. How are you today? Johnny, I'm doing listen, well. Listen, Phil, and this is very important. I have to tell you, I am so sorry that I missed your birthday yesterday. <laughs> so I'm calling you this morning to wish you a very, very happy birthday. Wow. Well, that you thank have you. one of the best years in your life in the coming months. What a beautiful thought. Thank you. I really do. I really do. I know you do. Now, I have 30 seconds to convince you and Mrs. Johnny OneNote and anyone else to come on over and uh, be with us on Christmas night. I will gladly do that. We would love that. Yeah, Christmas. Oh, okay. Christmas night. Okay. Yeah, Christmas sure. day night. <laughs> you know, I would like like any, go, great, great. Anytime, 435, 530, you know. Okay. All right. Phil, Merry Christmas to you. I probably won't talk to you until after Christmas. You and your family, please have a merry, merry Christmas. Thank you. I love you all. God bless you all. And Thank have you. a good Christmas. Okay? You're the best. You are the best. Thank you, Johnny. All those Christmas prayers around you as well. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Tim is putting together a Christmas Hanukkah sandwich. Hmm. Oh, I see the capers and the onions. Hey, guys, time to get in on the action for the biggest moments in basketball with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections, place your entry, and win up to 100 times your money. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use the code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy.